I've got seven o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Our first order of business. We got a moment of silence, followed by the pledge of allegiance. successful golf pro program both boys and girls and coach Nick Wallace and coach Austin Bird are their coaches uh, coach Wallace couldn't be here tonight because of uh, a ball game his daughter's playing in uh, I guess over in Henry County so uh, but we wanted tonight to recognize and if everybody can see over here this giant trophy that our boys won at the state tournament this year uh, it's the best finish that they've ever had but I'm gonna read some things <coughs> that Coach Wallace sent to me so we can kind of get an idea of how, how uh, excellent our <coughs> golf program is. Uh, they All year long our players have played against the best public private schools in the state. Uh, they competed in two of Innsworth High School tournament series events, Clarksville High School Elite Invitational, Christian County Invitational, Red Hawk Invitational, and the uh, Patriot Classic. Both of our teams have done Excellent, and we'll start with the girls team, uh, women's golf team. Our women's golf team finished with a record of 44, 16 and one. They were undefeated in district and region play. They won the district tournament uh, for the fifth straight time uh, with a score of 163. The 163 total is the lowest district total in school history. Freshman Natalie White was district champion and player of the year. Sophomore Shelby Smith finished second and uh, Jason Rose finished fourth. They won the region tournament with a 165. They've won the region tournament three of the last four years. Uh, it's the lowest region total in school history. And uh, Miss Shelby Smith finished second, Natalie finished third, and Jason finished fourth. Jacqueline, I'm sorry. I apologize for mispronouncing the name. That's my fault. Uh, finished fifth in the state tournament. Uh, <coughs> Natalie uh, finished 16th in the state, Shelby uh, 19th, and Jacqueline 35th. Uh, fifth in the state is the second best finish in the history of Stewart County women's golf. And uh, also on September 21st, Montgomery Bell, Shelby Smith posted the lowest nine hole round in the history of Stewart County women's golf with a 37. So let's give our women's, all our women's Stand up so everybody can see who you are. Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, we're looking next year to even improve on that, I hope. Uh, the men's golf team. Uh, our men's golf team finished with a record of 77 20 and 1. They were undefeated in district and region play. Uh, they won the district tournament with a 322. And that is the fourth straight district title for the uh, SC men's golf. Uh, junior Aiden Smith finished second. Uh, uh, Mr. Hayden Howe finished third. Landon Wallace finished fifth. And uh, Bo Atkins finished ninth. Uh, we also, the men's golf team won the region tournament with a 314. That is the fourth straight region title. And Landon Wallace finished second in the region. Aiden finished third. And Hayden, Hayden finished fourth and Bo finished 10th. Uh, they finished runner-up in the TSSAA State Tournament, and uh, Hayden Howe finished 4th, Aiden finished 10th, Landon 12th, and Bo 37th. Uh, the state runner-up is the best finish in the history of Stewart County men's golf. In the past four years, we've finished 3rd, 4th, 3rd, and 2nd. Hayden Howe qualified for the Tennessee Junior Amateur and will be, and, uh, will be named All-State for his play in the state tournament. 
This will be back-to-back -back years. We've had an all-state golfer of Hayden this year and Colin Smith last year. It's just a great accomplishment. I don't know how much y'all know about golf, but it is a tough, tough game. Uh, it's a, a, and it takes a lot of dedication and practice. And if the men's team would stand up too, we'd like to recognize you. So we're expecting a state championship. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. All right. Uh, item number four is the open public comment. Um, I've got one name, Miss Pam Wetzel. Um, before I begin, I'd like to welcome the public and uh, go over the public comment process. Comments are limited to items that are on the agenda. That to be voted on this evening will be given five minutes. I will inform you when your time expires. Please state your name and address prior to speaking for the record. All comments should be directed toward me as the chair. As a reminder, the public comments is, a, is an opportunity yes, for us to hear your thoughts. This is not a question and answer session. If you have any additional questions, I would encourage you to reach out to the board office or one of us outside the meeting for further discussion. So please, Ms. Lewis. Good evening. My name is Pam Wetzel. I live at 120 Shores Trail in Stewart. Um, I have grandchildren at Stewart County Middle School, two of them. I noticed that on the um, agenda tonight was the local education compliance report. And I tried to look it up online and was unable to find it. And I'm wondering, that's my question, where can I find it? And when the report for this year is complete, where will that be available? That's it. Okay. Uh, talk with me after the meeting if you can, and we'll, we'll discuss that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, item number five is corrections or additions <coughs> to and uh, approval of the agenda. There are no corrections or additions uh, unless somebody <coughs> has anything they want to add. Uh, and what I'll ask is for a, a, a motion to approve the agenda. Make a motion. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Second. Second by Mr. Passo. Uh, all those in favor for uh, the approval of the agenda say yes, yes. yes. Those opposed, no. The yes is had it. All right. Item number six is the approval of the minutes, which is the regular session from uh, September 14th that was in your packet that you received last week. Uh, I'll seek a motion for the approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Fitchew. Okay. Second by Ms. Sanders. Uh, is there any uh, discussion about the minutes? All right, uh, I'll ask for a vote for approval of the minutes. All those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. All right, the yeses have that. Item number seven is the consent agenda, uh, which is the fundraisers and field trips. Uh, I'll seek a motion for the approval of the consent agenda. Motion by Ms. Sanders. Second. Second by Mr. Lamb. Discussion. You want to talk about any of this? Uh, the uh, the fundraisers. Um, there were a few added, and, and uh, most of them at the high school. We have some new sponsors of our clubs, but they're normal fundraisers that we have every year. They're all going to be used for the kids <coughs> to be able to uh, participate in different things and pay for trips to nationals and things like that but I, if there's anything specific you'd like to ask about I'd be happy to try to answer your questions. Is there any questions about the consent agenda? All right all, all those in favor to approve the consent agenda signify by saying yes. 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 Those opposed no. All right the yes is had it. All right item number eight is discussion and or approval and approval of the policy 6.0, 6 uh, I'll seek a motion for uh, the approval of the policy. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Second by Ms. Sanders. All right, let's discuss this. Yes. Um, I'll seek a motion to suspend the rules so Ms. Cheryl Wooten can uh, talk to this uh, change of the policy. <coughs> I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Fitchew. 
second by Ms. Sanders. All those in favor for uh, suspending the rules say yes. Yes. Say yes. Those opposed, no. All right. The rules are suspended. Okay. Um, since um, I became director of health services, I've looked a lot at our policies and uh, compared those to law. And, um, and then, of course, the, the recommendations from uh, coordinated school health, um, you know, as to what we're supposed to do with the students who, uh, you know, have some of these really major disorders. The one that really stood out uh, with us was the, uh, the seizure, anti-seizure medications. And when I started looking at our policy, we had only mentioned one of the medications, and that was the uh, diastat. And that is actually a rectal-type medication um, and it's a, a diazepam, which is a Valium uh, product, okay? Or that's just the, the generic for it. Um, there are actually two other types of medications now that are being used, and one of those we're seeing a whole lot. It's a nasal uh, medication, which is a whole lot better for the students. We don't have to worry about kids being embarrassed or anything like that if, you know, they had to have the rescue med. So um, in looking at our policy, all it said was diastat. And we have to, if this medication is given, we have to call 911 and um, EMS takes over care, you know, from our nurses. So that same poly or that same procedure needs to be done when, uh, when any of these other anti-seizure medications are given. So that is the reason that we want to make these changes. Um, I have not, I did look at, at Tennessee School Board Association, I have not seen other counties doing this, but it may just, these new nasal medications are so new, I just don't think that, that you know, they've recognized it yet. So uh, same, same procedures are going to be followed and everything, but we just needed to make sure that we included the other medications as well. So I went through this line by line. I think Stacy maybe gave you that, um, those changes. Do I need to go over those or anything? Okay, I think, I think that the update is already done, yes? <coughs> Do you have any <coughs> questions about this? I just think it's a, a safer thing for us and also for the students just to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So in here, and I'm sorry, real, no. real quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I see where it's labeled out the different types mm -hmm. in here. So it's yes. not just anesthesia medications, it also does say them in the... Yes, exactly. In the, in the okay. Exactly. Yes, under That's what I was that on page two. Yeah. Yes, the definition. Right. Okay. It's the definition of these, and then it it actually gives the other names. Um, yeah. So they're intranasal diet. Right. Okay. And I think that we're going to start seeing more medications going intranasal. In fact, there's um, actually some talk about uh, epipens or the epinephrine going nasal. So. You know, that may be something that we have to look at down the road, changing that policy as well. Okay? Thank you. Any more questions for Ms. Wooden? Okay, I'm going to ask for a uh, motion. I'll seek a motion to unsuspend the rules. Motion to unsuspend the rules. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Second by Ms. Sanders. All those in favor in, in unsuspending the rules? Say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. All right. The rules are now not suspended anymore. We'll say it like that. Um, any other discussion about the uh, change of this policy? All right. I'm going to ask for I'll, I'm going to ask for a roll call. Do I need a roll call on that? Okay. All those in favor in uh, changing the uh, policy, uh, say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. All right. The yes is had it. All right. Uh, item number nine is the approval of the 141 budget amendments. I'll seek a motion for the approval of those of those amendments. Motion. <coughs> motion by Mr. Passeau. Second by Ms. Sanders. All right. Let's talk about them a little bit. We don't. Okay. Okay. All right, Mr. Gwynn, you can speak. The uh, first page of the 141 amendments, th these are all uh, part of the Innovative Schools Grant that we got, uh, that all the school systems in, in the state got, it's through CTE. This is just, it doesn't change the bottom line of the budget at all. All this money was uh, originally in the budget. We're just moving line items to comply with the latest guidance 
on how to spend the uh, ISM grant money. So it, it has zero effect on the, the bottom line of the budget. The uh, second page is new money. It is uh, a special education grant that Ms. Robin got for $21,229.82. Uh, she's going to use that to uh, pay for a, a special ed assistant. And um, that's the salary and, and, and the benefits that go along with that. If you have specific questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Or if uh, Ms. Robin needs to clarify anything, she's here. The grant, is it just for one year or is it for, is it reoccurring? It's reoccurring. reoccurring. What school are we looking at? For it, the it'll, it'll be Dover Elementary because it's a special ed pre-K okay. grant. So we're going to use, since this, the state is, is wanting us to include our special needs pre-K kids with our typically developed kids and so this assistant will go into those VPK classrooms to help. So it'd be BPS. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is just for one assistant or is it multiple? One. One. I would love to have, but I, there's not enough money with that. So with the, with the grant, I mean, if, I mean, I guess the assistant understands, I mean, there is a possibility that we might not get the grant, I'm assuming, if it goes away. Now, the state told us it's recurring. Recurring. Okay. So, so nothing not to worry about there. Okay. So is this, with it being a grant, do we have to, any restrictions on how we hire, who we hire, special ed assistant wise, they don't have to be certified? Any other questions? All right, I'm going to ask for a roll call on the, this. Madam Secretary. Ms. Fitzhugh? Yes. Mr. Passeau? Yes. Ms. Sanders? Yes. Mr. Gillum? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Morgan? Yes. All right. Um, the amendment's passed. Uh, item number 10 is approval of the 142 budget amendments. I'll seek a motion for the approval of the 142 budget amendments. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Second. Second by Mr. Passell. All right, discussion. Uh, Dr. Duncan will speak to those federal amendments, so if it's okay, Dr. Duncan, you want to talk to those? Um, most of these are my consolidated funding app, the Title I, Title II, Title IV money, just carry over from FY23, putting that into the FY24 budget. Um, looking at the Title I, you know, dropping funds there for instructional applies, the other salaries and wages that would cover after school tutoring at our Title I schools, and then benefits. Um, down at Title II, that's professional development money, so the carryover rolling over into professional development for FY24. Title IV in uh, instructional supplies, uh, robotics there on the 7110599, other charges, that's the Pay robotics teams, competition fees, that thousand dollars, and then seven two one three zero four ninety nine other supplies and materials, thirty five hundred dollars. We use that money to support our PBS programs in all of our schools uh, and our literacy nights. So the supplies that we buy to support those and our PBS coaches, um, other funds there were for staff development, um, and then the one additional one eight hundred one down there, CTE Perkins money for Miss Baggett, our CTE program. She had an adjustment to her FY24 allocation of $10.97, and then she made a few line transfers to drop some more funds into instructional supplies. And there were also 142 special ed for this this will be the next page. Okay, so um, for mine, I've got my 901, my 142 901. Um, those are all allocations and carryover for the 2024 budget. Um, the same thing with my IDA pre K allocations and carryover that's just been budgeted for this year. And then my third page is the, the remaining amount of my American Relief Plan money. Um, it has to be spent and finalized by December 31. I just needed to move some money to, to pay out some things that we purchased prior to uh, uh, September 30th. So there's no new money, I just moved it around to cover those costs. So Robert, on page three, you said this money has to be spent by December 31st of this year? 
Yes, it had to be allocated by September 30th, which I did because oh, okay. it, it, it was COVID money. Okay. And so it has to be it has to be expended by December yes. 30th. <clears throat> so the credit is what's going into 24 fiscal year 24, right? Is yes. that correct? Yes. So how many? Is that for the whole year or school year? Which one are you looking at? I'm looking at special ed assistance, speech pathologist, um, special ed assistance, 272,000. Is yes, that that's, that's for this school year. That's for this school year. Mm -hmm. And we, I guess I'm asking, we have that many assistants. How many, how many special ed assistants do we have? Oh gosh, I'm going to check that. I would say. You can get it to me later. I just, okay, I mean, we've got a lot. I mean, yeah. We have a lot. Okay. And as speech pathologists, we have two, correct? We have one licensed SLP and a speech teacher, yes. Okay. Any more questions? <clears throat> Good questions. All right, I'll ask for a roll call, Madam Secretary. Mr. Morgan? Yes. Ms. Fitchie? Yes. Mr. Passo? Yes. Ms. Sanders? Yes. Mr. Gillum? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. All right. Item um, <clears throat> number 11 is the uh, approval of the TISA accountability report. Uh, I'll seek a motion for the approval of that accountability report. Motion. Motion by Mr. Passo. Second by Ms. Sanders. All right. We'll have a discussion. Okay, and I may have to have Dr. Duncan uh, weigh in on this a little bit because he did the bulk of the work on this. With the new uh, funding formula, Tennessee Investment Student Achievement that the legislature has, has put forth that we're now working under, it's, that's replaced the old, y'all probably, probably remember the old BEP plan, heard those n names, now it's called this. One of the things that we're required to do is to have an accountability report in which we lay out the goals to make improvement uh, on our our third grade and, and, and other things uh, uh, as far as their uh, achievement. Uh, the, one of the goals that's required, and I'm just going to hit the highlights because there's a lot in this. Uh, one of the goals that's, that's required, and we must pursue the goal of 70% or more of the district's third grade students to score met expectations or exceeded expectations on the English language arts portion of TCAP tests. This goal must also detail the district's goal to increase third grade ELA proficiency rates by 15% of the gap over the next three years, starting with 22-23 TCAP results, which we just did last year. Uh, and the district stated goal of at least 70% of those students being proficient in ELA. Now, you were given the packet where this template was filed with the state. Uh, this past year, we had 31.1% of third graders who were who met expectations or exceeded expectations. So uh, we went through and we have made goal statements, uh, four of them. Uh, one is 70% by the year 2030, 70% will score proficient on third grade ELA TCAP. Uh, I know that sounds like a long way off, but the, these numbers that we and the goals that we set, we did with the guidance from the Department of Education. Uh, so, you know, it would be unrealistic for us to think that we're going to go from 31 to 70 percent in one year. That, that's just, it's just not, and nobody's doing that. There's nobody in the state that's doing that. So these, these goals were, 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 we were given guidance to set these goals where they're achievable, and, uh, and uh, that's going to be what we're going to work for. We're already working towards that. We're already seeing in our benchmark testing a great deal of improvement uh, in our, in our uh, reading proficiency or in our ELA proficiency. Uh, goal statement two, and I, I'm not going to read all of it to you but because you, you have it in your packet. Uh, increased proficiency per, uh, percentage per grade on three through eight. Math TCAP EOC on Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry by 27, 28. 
third grade at 50%, fourth grade 58.1%, fifth grade 50%, sixth grade 51.5%, seventh 50.4, eighth 32.2, algebra 25.2, and algebra 2 33, and geometry 33.9. Goal statement three was to increase proficiency rates in all across the board in ELA, and then goal statement four is that we have a at least 55% of our high school graduates will have a ready graduate status by the 27-28 school year. And if you have any specific questions, uh, we can we can answer those the best that we can. Uh, but uh, what this is basically doing, this the idea behind this or the theory behind it is all this money that TISA and they have increased funding, but this is going to uh, tie. Uh, the money we're receiving and then the outcomes that we have so people can see how we're spending our money and uh, what the uh, what the results are of, of where we're putting our resources because the better you do the more money you get from the state the way this system is set up any questions well can we put it on is it going to be on the school website it, we put it out okay and it was, and we had a public, we had a public comment section, uh, and we had a deadline on Absolutely. November first, yep. and we put it out, and uh, we had public comment, and after public comment, we brought it to, we sent it into the state, and but we have to have y'all approve it. The uh, state's already got it. We have to have a board approve in the minutes that y'all have received it. This might, I'm not sure if this is for you or Ben. Uh, they're part of the. The goal and, and part of the procedures you're going to do, right, is high doses, low ratio tutoring. Are we getting the extra money to, are we, let me see how I word it, are we adding faculty to do that or are we, we just, we, are we able to do it now? We're able to do it now. Okay. We're in, in fact, fourth graders who did, who were in, in the, who were in danger of failing, of being retained, and they went to some, some went to summer school or a lot went to summer school. They're they're receiving uh, high dosage tutoring, tutoring now. now. Okay. Because they have to show adequate growth, or we'll have to retain them in fourth grade. Okay. Those even the kids who went through all the process of summer school, they still have to show that they are making progress. And will this follow the third? The, so the fourth graders now that were third grade last year, or is it third grade every year that comes through? Like second graders, you got third. You go through the third grade retention. Yep. And then if you don't meet the expectations, let's say, there's different ways to get to go on to fourth grade, and that might be going to summer school. And, and Dr. Duncan, help me if I miss something. Uh, summer school, it may be uh, summer school and tutoring, uh, but there are exemptions to it. If you have an IEP and things like that, you're not you're you're taken out of that. So yes, they're receiving tutoring now, but they have to, if they have to have tutoring, they also have to show adequate growth in fourth grade to go on from fourth yeah. to fifth. Okay. But our, right. our hope is that if we're doing what we set out to do, we won't have many in third grade that are in danger of being retained. Yeah. Okay. I think right now at Dover Elementary, we have 15 children in fourth grade that are receiving high dosage uh, tutoring, correct? 15? Yes, sir. And I think, how many at North Stewart? Four. Fort North Stewart Street. And the, the tutoring's being done by certified teachers. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, but that's 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 part of the regulation. <coughs> I want to make sure I get that out there. That's in addition to the children that get RTI every day. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and whatever tier, the, I think we have excellent tier one instruction. That's just regular classroom instruction too. Okay. 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 Any other comments? <clears throat> all right. Uh, all those in favor of approval of the TISA accountability report signify by saying yes. 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 Those opposed, no. All right. <coughs> this is having item number 12 is the approval of the LEA compliance report. I'll seek a motion for the approval of the LEA compliance report. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Second. 
second by Miss Sanders. Discussion. Every year, this is a, and I don't want to call it a paperwork drill, but that's kind of what this, we do this every year, the compliance report. Uh, local education, and I'll just read to you what the Department of Education says about this report and what, we, what our responsibilities are. Local education agency, LEAs, are required to comply with all federal and state education laws and state board of education rules. The annual compliance report is one mechanism the department uses to ensure education laws and rules are faithfully executed. The Commissioner of Education is charged with taking corrective action when an LEA is non-compliant with those laws and rules or is not following department approved compliance plan. We have to report, we have to turn this report into the state uh, by November 30th of each year and uh, we are required to carefully check the status of its compliance with all federal and state education laws and SBE rules. Top department mon monitors and verifies LEA compliance via multiple data sources, education information system, EIS, internal program managers, and consider those sources in making a final determination of the compliance. So basically what we do is we, we sign off that we, as far as we can, as we know, that we are following all things and th leading up to this since August 1st we have a lot of interaction with the state in all different areas to make sure that in e-plan and other things that what we're doing we're being compliant. It doesn't mean that something may not happen at some point where we make a mistake but it is, it's just ensuring that we are following the laws that, that are put forth for us. Thank you. Is there any discussion on that? All right. Um, yeah, y'all know I'm going to ask something. No, go ahead, go ahead. ahead. Uh, so this is all federal, state laws, any li even to the littlest thing. I know we have the uh, Tennessee board that helps us, lawyers, making sure that we're staying in check. Is there anything else that goes into it other than, you know, principals, director, school board, and all of our lawyers checking everything, looking at the policies? Um, <coughs> that, I mean, we're, we're doing what the state asks us to do. Yeah. And, and they ask us to make sure that we are following. <coughs> and again, you have to understand. <coughs> If we turn something in that we're doing in a program to the state on e plan, that's our. I'm trying to explain. I try to explain what that is. That's like uh, uh, anything that we do to spend money or or any programs that we do, we have to go through. We have to put these in with the state through what's called e plan. Okay. If there's something wrong, they reject it, and we have to fix it. So as as of right now, everything that we've done so far this year, we are in compliance. That doesn't mean something couldn't happen at some point when we're not in compliance. Somebody makes a mistake and does something wrong, we will hear it from the state. And we will have to either, we'll have to show what we're doing to correct it. And that's basically how, how this works. Yeah, that's what I saw the example, um, you know, non-conformity, I guess is what it said or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions? All those in favor of approval of the LEA compliance report signify by saying yes. 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 Those opposed no. All right. Item number 13 is the approval of the 24-25 calendar. Uh, I'll seek a motion for the approval of the 24-25 calendar. Motion. Motion by Mr. Passo. Second. Second by Mr. Gillum. <coughs> Discussion? Yeah, <coughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Give you give your spiel about. Okay, we uh, we sat down with all the uh, administrators, representatives from the faculty, and each school had community members on the uh, uh, on, to give input on this. We always go by the same guidelines that were set forth way before I became director uh, that we would not start school before August first. 
correct? August 1st, which we will start next year on Thursday, August 1st for a half day. Then we'll have a no student day on the 2nd. Uh, we will have a fall break, a full week fall break. Actually, it's six days next year because we're going back our, we're going to put our uh, parent teacher conferences on the day before fall break like we did this year. And uh, that way the kids get well, half, uh, one and a half day extra on fall break. Uh, Veterans Day, of course, is covered. Uh, almost three weeks at Christmas and then spring break and then will be the last day of school next year will be May 23rd. And I'll answer any questions. Mike, is graduation still? Cause I didn't... We haven't set graduation okay. on this, okay. this okay. for next year yet. Okay. I knew I didn't see it on there, so. We usually wait till the right before school starts with right. Mr. Uh, okay. Gray and myself and all of us will talk about what's best. Alright, any other questions? All those in favor of the approval of the 24-25 calendar, signify by saying yes. 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 So vote no. Alright, item number uh, 14 is the approval of the sale of surplus item 2006 Chevrolet pickup. I'm not going to read the VIN. Uh, I'll seek a motion for the approval of the sale of the surplus item. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lamb, second by Ms. Pichu. All right, uh, discussion? We just got a new used vehicle, uh, got a great deal on one. This one was about ready to, to go out of service. Anybody interested in a 2006 <laughs> Chevrolet with about 300,000 miles on it? Is that the white one? Yes, it's one of the white ones that we are finally Good putting to rest. It served its purpose. Yes, 17 years. <laughs> All right. Um, let me get a roll call on that one. Mr. Mr. Passau. Yes. Ms. Sanders. Yes. Mr. Gillum. Yes. Mr. Lamb. Yes. Mr. Morgan. Yes. Ms. Fitchie. Yes. All right. Um, item number 15 is a discussion of the record evaluation. We don't need a motion on this one. We're just going to talk about it. Uh, we're needing to do uh, an evaluation on the director and uh, we in the past the last year we had uh, TSBA handle that um, I'd really like to have them do that again they would send a, <coughs> uh, a petition to each one of you to your emails and uh, you have so many days to respond and then they compile all the information and and get that back to us uh, that last year I think I got it back to all of you pretty pretty fast uh, so y'all could see what the results was and that's what I'd like to do this year but uh, I'm open for any kind of discussion on that this this would preclude uh, us uh, voting on a contract for the director so in the next uh, the next uh, board meeting we'd like to I'd like to discuss the contract for the director so uh, this would be before that and we need to do this before we do that yeah I think it's gonna bring in somebody from out like that worked out that way. All right. Any other discussion about that? We don't need to really vote about it, but uh, y'all, everybody okay with uh, TSBA handling that this time? It's fine with me. All right. Then that's what we'll do. Any more discussion about it? All right. Thank y'all. Um, item number 16 is the director's report. I don't have a whole lot, but I do want to commend our finance department. Uh, we had a clean audit this year from the comptroller again. Uh, I think the, how many, I think five or six years in a row we've had that and the county had a clean audit overall. So, but we're really proud of uh, how we're fiscally responsible and Mr. Gwynn and Miss Gina and others in the uh, board office do an excellent job in that. I'm not a finance guy, so I depend on people like, like Mr. Gwynn and, and his staff to take care of these things so we're real proud of, of having a clean audit and uh, you know we we try to take care of the money and uh, make sure that we're spending it where it needs to be spent uh, the only other thing I wanted to do today is uh, uh, mention is uh, I'd like to say thank you to all our veterans I, I believe we have only one on the school board as a veteran Mr. Kyle Passo and uh, Kyle thank you for your service and uh, 
We appreciate it. And uh, had a great Veterans Day uh, program today at, at, at uh, Dover Elementary that I was able to attend. And then uh, yesterday, North Stewart, which I couldn't, I was in a meeting, but they had, a, uh, from what I saw, uh, an excellent Veterans Day parade. So we're, we're proud of that. Uh, we're proud of our all of our principals and assistant principals and the job that they're doing uh, every day. Our schools are, uh, we feel, are, 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 are getting better all the time. And that's, that's the goal, is always trying to improve. And if we see something we're weak at, we're going to work to make it a strength. And so uh, I know everybody that today was looking forward to this three-day weekend that we're starting at the end of this meeting. So that's all I have. All right. Uh, item number 17 is announcements. Does anybody have anything they want to talk about? Any board member? All right. Um, item number 18 is adjournment. Ms. Lana makes a motion for adjournment, seconded by Mr. Gillum. Uh, all those in favor say yes. 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 So opposed, no. 